Hi guys. To be honest, I expected uh, not as many people as there are now after the party yesterday. So yeah, uh, congratulations to you that you uh, are here uh, despite partying hard, I guess. So um, what we will do here is first uh, I will present an overview over the field of, of uh, the economics of privacy. Uh, and I'll keep it pretty brief here. I just have the uh, most important arguments uh, summarized. And then I'll give you my opinion on that, which is an Austrian perspective. Um, and yeah, then I, I will have some slides still, but uh, I will be as brief as possible to leave as much room as possible for questions later. Okay. So let's talk first about what is privacy. I guess you all know uh, the de definition I used here. It's the definition that is found in the cypherpunk manifesto. Privacy is the power to selectively reveal your, oneself to the world. And it's very important to distinguish it from secrecy. The reason I'm saying this is, as you will see later in the arguments that are made, in the economics of privacy field, uh, many of the arguments, in my opinion, conflate privacy and, and secrecy. The implications of the privacy definition I have just presented are that privacy cannot be given to you by any institution. It must be taken because if it is given, uh, then somebody has, else has the power to reveal information about you. And the second implication is that there can be no half privacy because if privacy is limited in any way, it means that the primary selection is done by somebody else and he has the power then to, to selectively reveal, reveal the information about you. Okay, let's go into the first argument that is often made. This is uh, made against regulation. And it is said that um, if there is privacy regulation, this conceals potentially relevant information from other economic agents. Um, and also a related argument that is often made is that if you are personally protecting your information, you are signaling a negative tra uh, trait. Uh, if this information is then um, removed from the marketplace because the privacy regulation says you can't publish this information, you can't even ask for this information, then this transfers the cost of, of the negative trades to all other economic agents. And this is why it's a bad idea to have uh, privacy regulation. Uh, as you can already see, it's just in, in the field of, of uh, the economics of privacy, they are focused on either privacy regulation or no privacy regulation, which is, I think, a false dichotomy. But uh, yeah, uh, let's explore further. Uh, the second argument that is made against uh, privacy regulation is that there are privacy costs, namely, uh, if, for example, you want to, to publish or to give information to a marketer so he can provide you with more rel relevant information for you um, and you are not allowed to do that because of privacy regulation, then this will lead to, to less relevant information for you, which is bad because then uh, you, you, you will have to, to deal with being less perfectly informed than you would be if there would be no privacy regulation. Then the third point that is made against privacy regulation is that if the markets work perfectly, then uh, the seller of the information and the buyer of the information can actually work out uh, a system that allows the seller of the information to still protect the data if he's willing to pay sufficiently, namely to pay more than the data is worth to the buyer of the information. Um, 
Okay, let's now go to the arguments for privacy regulation. Uh, one argument that is often, um, yeah, is, is often used is that the secondary usage of data could be an issue, meaning that, as we already said before, if the uh, buyer of the information plans to, to sell the information to some third party, then the economic agents can't really defend against that. Uh, reason for that is they don't even have the information that, the inf uh, that their data is being sold. So, um, yeah, if, if that is the case, then we might need, so is the argument, privacy regulation to make sure that the economic agents are, are not hurt by, by these kinds of transactions. And then we have a final point that is often uh, made. This is myopical decisions. So uh, people are, when they are selling their data or giving away their data, they are trading uh, short-term benefits, like for example, using the, the, the Google uh, system uh, in exchange for long-term costs, namely that their data is not anymore in their hands. And this uh, also leads to the uh, privacy paradox. Uh, I won't go into that too much uh, yet because uh, we don't have too much time, but yeah, we can discuss that afterwards if you like. Okay, so what does this all mean? Um, theoretically, if markets would work perfectly, uh, they would probably take care of many of the privacy issues, but the market is not perfect, as I guess you would all agree on. Uh, is government regulation on privacy the solution? I really doubt that for many reasons. Uh, one of the reasons being, and I won't go into that uh, too much, but the main violator nowadays of your privacy of your data is government. And if you make government responsible for your privacy, that's pretty much like making a child rapist being responsible for your children. I hope you won't do that. And still, we, we do that with our privacy sometimes. So the arguments I want to focus on are, uh, first of all, moral hazard. Uh, and I will go into that in more detail, but it relates to uh, acting responsible with data. And the second is risk of conformity and self-censorship. First thing, uh, do you all know what moral hazard is? I, I will explain it just to be sure. Um, if, if you think uh, back what happened with the bank bailouts, uh, this is, in my opinion, the perfect example. Um, the government just bailed out the banks, and because of that, the banks are now acting in a much more risky way than they did before. So they are actually acting irresponsible. And this is what also happens if the government decides to protect your, your privacy. You don't have the incentive anymore to act as responsible as you should or maybe could be, uh, when it comes to, to your, your data. You're now giving away your data. You're not thinking about uh, what the, the possible negative effects uh, could be, what uh, people will do with your data, because the government will actually protect you from harm anyway. And as protection of privacy is, is costly, why should you incur the costs, uh, the, the additional costs? Mo most people, would, would think that way. So um, it, it leads to a kind of rational ignorance. Uh, the, the people just don't care about privacy anymore. And that applies to, to the healthcare system. We can see that, uh, that people are acting irresponsible when the government takes care of healthcare and you don't have to pay personally for your healthcare. You can also see that in, in the pension system, you can see that as already mentioned, with the banks. Um, and 
one major issue that I wanted to point out as well is that the irresponsible behavior that results out of this also impacts third parties because, for example, if uh, one of your friends uh, posts a photo of you from some event on, on Instagram and you didn't want other people to know that you were at the, at the event, then you did nothing wrong. You, you didn't, didn't publish your data. But your friend is now, because of his irresponsible behavior, is compromising your privacy. So, second, uh, maybe what, what I uh, would also mention there is that to make people more responsible in their uh, behavior when it comes to, to dealing with privacy, one approach could be to make it as, as um, to, to punish people as much as possible for data, uh, for, for data violations. So um, if the post something, the government shouldn't be uh, kind of like uh, reducing the harm done for them. They should actually, if it's possible, even increase the harm so that people have the incentive to be as responsible with the data as possible. That's maybe an, an approach that I would suggest, but I wouldn't rely on government to do that, honestly. Okay, uh, second issue is self-censorship. I guess you all heard what happened with the trucker protests in, in Canada, where they were protesting against the COVID measures. Uh, and yeah, the government essentially decided that we will freeze your bank accounts. Well, that could happen. And this is exactly what we will focus here, uh, what we will focus on here. Uh, if the government or, or any institution essentially has all your private data um, and they can actually force you to do something, uh, then this is kind of like could be deadly for, for dissenting or oppositional voices. So this is a really high cost because if you don't have mon money anymore, if you don't have access to any of your bank accounts, and nobody is helping you, what does this mean? It means death by starvation. And this is what opposition in the extreme case, in such an extreme case, could lead to. Now we have the issue that if we want to improve on society, if, you, if we want to uh, disrupt the current system, we need people that think outside of the box, that go against the norms. But if there is potential harm in that, that's much less likely to happen. So if you create such a system where you don't have real privacy anymore, um, but you also have potential punishment to go against the norm, you actually create a stagnant economy. You create also a, a very hopeless society. So that's something that we should think about when we, when we discuss uh, economics uh, in, in, in relation to privacy. Okay, a quick outlook on the future. What uh, could happen, uh, what I think is likely to happen, um, we will have um, more data and more privacy regulation by the government and therefore also more is irresponsible behavior by most people when it comes to sharing of data. We will also have CBDCs. Um, we will have more surveillance of uh, all, all areas of life, I guess. And we will also have at some point probably social scoring system. And this makes both privacy and uh, opposition to, to government measures very costly, at least potentially. What are better solutions to the whole privacy issue? Well, we could create alternative structures, and this is exactly what you are doing. And I really want to thank you for, for what you are doing. It's, it's really something that needs to be done to defend against government. Uh, just one, one, one thing that is crucially important, 
uh, I, I think it's very important to focus on making the systems that you create very easy to use and relatively cheap to make sure that the people that are not as interested in privacy as we are, but a little bit less interested or only marginally uh, interested so that we can even um, yeah, make, make our points uh, to them and, and um, have them use our systems. So summing up, uh, the market solutions to protecting privacy are of course not perfect, but the governmental solutions are probably much worse, at least potentially much worse. Uh, privacy is, as I, as I mentioned, necessary for a well-functioning and innovative economy. And that is why alternative structures that take into account, and this is also important, different individual preferences to privacies are crucial to both having a healthy economy and also to protecting privacy the best way possible. Thank you.